strings. In this presentation, we're going to talk about string literals, creating string objects, and using string methods. There are eight primitive data types. For whole numbers, you have byte, short, int, and long. For decimal numbers, you have float and double. And for Boolean, um, represents values of true and false. And you have a char um, um, data type for Unicode values. Those are the eight primitive data types. Primitive data uh, uh, type variables hold the actual data items that they're associated with. For instance, if I say int number, a memory cell large enough to hold a number is allocated. So an int is four bytes. So four bytes is allocated for a number. And I'm calling that mem name memory cell number. When I say number equals 25, the 25 then goes in that memory cell. So that's for all primitive data types. All primitive data types hold the actual data items that they're associated with. Now Java does not have a primitive data type to store strings in memory. Java has a, um, included a special class. So there's a class named string that has data and methods in it that we can then use to create uh, string variables. A, we've seen examples of string literals. They're enclosed within um, double quotation marks. Actually, what's happening here is that you're creating an instance of the string class. You have to have space for each individual character plus a count of how many characters that there um, are. So Hello World has 11 characters, including the character for the space in between. Class um, type variables do not hold the actual data items. They reference the memory addresses. They're called reference variables. For example, if I say string name, I'm creating an um, instance of a string called name. And the first thing I'm doing there is when I say um, I'm creating a memory cell large enough to hold an address, the memory address. With that first statement, it defaults to null because I'm not pointing to anything. Then when I make the assignment name equals Joe, what happens? Memory cell large enough for um, Joe is allocated. J, the O, and the E are allocated, plus uh, the count is all stored in the class. And the address of that object is then stored in name. So the address um, 0xA1F is stored in the name reference variable. So name holds the address that points to the data. Strings are immutable. They're constant. That means that they cannot be changed after they're created. New space is allocated for each uh, subsequent assignment. For example, if I say string equals help, Space is allocated for string that stores an, the address of um, address of an object. Then the object um, is stored where it has um, I keep track of each individual character plus the count. That address um, x uh, e thirteen is then stored in string. Is this stored in str? If I have another assignment after that, str equals uh, the string a, what happens here is space is allocated, new space is allocated for um, each character in the string literal, which is actually one character there, the character a, and the count is stored, and the address of that object is now stored in the string reference variable, str. So new space is allocated for each subsequent um, assignment. There are several methods in the string class. They include methods for examining individual characters, comparing strings, searching strings, extracting substrings, creating a copy of a string with all characters translated to either uppercase or lowercase. So these are already included in the string class definition. We will explore the following methods. Length, two uppercase, two lowercase, and char at. 
You call a method by using the name of the reference variable, a, a dot, and then the method name, followed by the parentheses. You include any arguments within the parentheses if there be any. In the example below here, we have string str equals apple, and the call statements would be str dot length, open close parentheses, str dot two uppercase, open and close parentheses, str dot triat three, close parentheses. All right, so those are examples of method call statements. Um, all right, so let's look at length. Length um, returns the number of characters in the string. So say that I have a string uh, name equals Joe, and I have int count. To call the method, I say name.length. I'm calling the length method. It's very important to remember the parentheses. That will um, return the number of characters that are in the name string. Count gets the value of 3, and I display 3 on the screen. So count is a memory cell that has three name points to a class um, object uh, that has Joe in the count. To lowercase. To lowercase returns the lowercase equivalent of the string. So I have a string name equals Joe uh, space 123A. It has two letters that are capitalized. And then I have, I'm making space for a string lower. Lower equals name dot to lowercase, open and close parentheses. To lowercase does not change name. It produces a copy of name and stores that in lower. So lower has Joe one, two, three, A plus the count. And then name has um, the capital J and A, capital A. In the output, I, I printed the lowercase first, then I printed the um, name to show you that it's still going to remain. The name does not change. Then you have the to uppercase method. To uppercase returns the uppercase equivalent of the string. So if name has um, Joe, one, two, three, A, and then I'm going to create a space for uppercase. Upper equals name dot to uppercase. What happens here is that um, when I print upper, it will um, have O and E capital. Um, uh, so it, it converted O and E. So all the lowercase letters are converted to uppercase letters. And then if I print name, I'm just going to show you that it remains the same. So a new space, there's a different space for name and for upper. And our last method that we want to look at is char at. Now char at is a method that accepts a, an argument here. It accepts, you pass to it the index position of the string that you, uh, uh, index position of the character that you want to look at. So give me the char at a, in, a given index position. We have to remember the first character of the um, um, in the string is at position zero. So J is at position zero, O is at position one, and E is at position two, etc. So string name equals Joe space one two three A char letter letter equals name dot char at one. So um, letter is um, o. Then I say name dot print line name dot char at zero, and that gives you the first character, which is the J. So um, name um, points to a string um, literal Joe, an instance of a string uh, class, and then you have um, the letter has the character O in it.